look at um, EcoMaps, which is the second part of our um, sort of family social context. So your genogram usually belongs to your family um, history taking, and then your EcoMaps very much belongs to your social history taking. And what we're trying to do now is we first try to understand the patient in the context of the family, and now we're gonna try and understand the family in the context of their community. Um, and it's slightly different in how we how we subscribe these. So for every family, you're gonna draw up a genogram that tells us about the family, and you're gonna give us an eco map to tell us about their community. So this is going, going to give us um, a visual description of the family's relationship with its external environment. And with external environment, we're talking specifically sort of social environments. This can include workplaces, churches, um, even things like getting your grants from your, your sasa and getting a grant from somewhere, social services, your local shabins, where you go to shopping. So all of those um, particular interfaces with community where there's a, a strong relationship with that particular aspect of the community. Um, and it can be both other formal systems or informal systems that forms part of this family's ecosystem. And there's not really any rules of what you should or shouldn't put in there, whatever you think is relevant to help you understand this family in the wider context. Um, and what we particularly want to want to look at is we want to understand where the strengths are with this family. So what in this community is really able to support and help this family, but it also helps you to identify where there's deficits. So you can also notice, well, this family is actually quite isolated or they actually don't have enough healthcare support or they actually don't have enough social services support. So you're also able to, to see the gaps. So when we draw an eco map, it's a different concept and it's going to look a bit like a solar system. So it's all made up of circles and each little system that transacts with this family is going to have its own little circle. And we're going to identify whether these circles are offering support or whether they're actually, um, whether they're good for this family or whether they're bad for this family on a very sort of simple, simple level. So what's also important is sometimes you might even put systems in there where there is no contact and where actually you've identified a gap. Um, and then you might actually highlight that, that there's a little circle on this side, there's no relationship between my um, family and this, but this is actually important. We need to organize, for example, a disability grant. And at the moment, they haven't yet linked in with, with social services. So these are the kinds of, of symbols. And what becomes important now is that we are going to look at how we describe the relationship between two systems. And this gets a little bit more, um, more, more complicated. So if you've got system A, which might be your family, and then system B, that let's say, for example, it's the um, the local um, school, for example, um, your arrows is going to tell you what the relationship is between these two systems. So you can see um, they're using here um, uh, for positive a line, but actually what we are. So for positive would be a straight, straight, solid line. And then the way your energy moves. So if whatever is, if if system A is good for system B, so system A is putting positive, um, is having a positive effect on system B, then your arrow will go from system A to system B. You could also have a scenario where both are are benefiting each other. So for example, a child who's family is paying for the child to go to a school, that uh, the, the school is benefiting from the child coming to the school and the child is benefiting from going to school. So then you will have an arrow like here going into, into, both, into both directions. If the relationship is stressful, so they're actually having a negative effect on each other, then you can have a, um, an arrow like that. Um, and again, your arrows will show how they are affecting each other. So say, for example, you have a shabim. Um, and you have some, your family, your husband and the family is drinking a lot in that shabin, and that shabin is having a negative effect on him. If you want to get really fancy, you could say, well, he's having a positive effect on the shabin because he's paying money to that shabin. So you're always going to look at how's energy flowing. And is this positive energy that's flowing, or is it this negative energy that's flowing? You can also use a dotted line, and that's quite important if you're trying to think, say, for example, there's another um set of grandparents that was very involved with the family but now there's a very tenuous relationship with that particular extended family then you can have a 
Um, so they're not in conflict, but they're just not supporting or seeing each other, then you can use your, your dotted line. The majority of times you're going to use straight lines with arrows or you're going to use uh, squiggly lines with arrows to figure out whether this is a positive or a negative um, flow of, of energy. So yeah, so we're calling it like a solar system. Your family genogram is going to be placed in the position of the sun, and we're going to look at the household is what sits at the center. And then we're going to look at all these other important people and institutions that will be depicted around the center, like planets around the sun. So I'm going to look a little bit at some, some examples. So for example, you'll see here in this, um, and this is actually not completely correct, this diagram. Um, I'll show you a little bit. I'm hoping I've got a better one in a moment. But you'll see in the middle circle here, you will draw just the people in, in the family unit. So only the husband and the wife and one child lives in the household. So you leave everybody else out that's not in the household. And the reason why I'm saying this picture is not strictly speaking correct is because your lines will obviously have arrows. But for example, they will be linked to specific people. So say, for example, all three of them go to the church, then your line might end at the church and there'll be an arrow going in both directions because they're strengthening each other. Um, but let's say only the wife goes to the church, the husband and the child is not of a relationship with church, then actually that line will go just from the wife to the church. The child might go to the school um, or has friends and might just have a line between, between the child and the, and the friends, for example. So the EcoMap is a, is a very flexible tool and can, you can adapt it to a variety of, of different scenarios. But what's also very helpful is while you are constructing it with the family, similar to the genogram, it actually helps you to have a discussion. So, you know, what is your relationship to the clinic? How often do you go there? Do you like going to the clinic? What is, you know, does, um, how supportive is that clinic? You know, what is the situation with work? How far are the schools? Which kids are on which schools? So you start seeing an idea of what that is like. Um, and the EcoMap can therefore help, um, as I say, it's quite often used in child welfare to be able to start understanding their, where, which systems are in conflict with this family and particularly to start identifying um, areas where there are um, support, but also areas where there are gaps. Um, so this is a much better, much better, much better description. So here you can see are uh, the five people that are within the solar system. In this particular one, they didn't actually even show the relationships, but you can draw in that's a husband and a wife and their three children. Um, and you can see here, this is examples of, so they've got a bunch of neighbors that lives two houses down that they have, um, that Sally has got a very, um, both a positive relationship, but also, um, interestingly enough, a conflict relationship with. So sometimes you also have arguments with the people that you get on with. Um, you can see that Mary here has got a very positive relationship going both sides with a group of friends. John has got a very strong relationship with his old bunch of friends running around with them all day long. Both or Henry, John and Mary all go to the same school and you probably have the name of the school in and that's a relationship that obviously goes ways. Henry Jr. attends the Scouts. The father um, is at the works for the hardware store, and that's uh, he's worked there for years. It's a big financial income for the family, um, and he obviously contributes. He owns that little store. They've got a, um, a, a mother, Mrs. A. Senior, that um, she's got her own little household where she lives, and they have a very close relationship with her son, but it's sort of, yeah, both good and bad relationship with her daughter-in-law. Um, and then Henry is also very involved with the local community organization. So you can see there's a um, lots of ways of not just showing you what is all the types of things in our community that we interact with, but what also the quality of that relationships are like. So they give us an idea of the family's connectedness to the external world, and they also give us an idea where resources might need to be mobilized or, or strengthened. Um, I think we've actually repeated this several times. Okay, so now what we want to do is um, you're now going to do the same exercise that we did with the genogram but you're now going to do your own family's eco map. So you've done your genogram. So again, in the middle, you're going to make a circle. Um, and in your circle there, you're going to be putting the people who live in that household together. So remember in our previous one, there's a, was a, um, a mother, a grand, the grandfather, the grandmother, there's our patient, 
um, and then there was that son, um, the, the son from the previous relationship that also lives in the household. Um, and we just have, I've just put in a couple of examples here. So the whole family goes to the church. Um, this particular, the husband likes to go surfing and he's got a strong relationship with his in-laws as well as some conflict with the in-laws. The youngest likes to hang out at the Chapin quite a lot and uh, the 23-year-old is a student um, or works at Wusu or whatever. Um, so before we get you to draw your own ones, is there any questions about the eco map? And then I'm going to give you five minutes because this goes quickly um, until 37 past five to quickly think of yourself when you're at home, think of the people in your household and draw up an eco map of your family. <laughs> 